Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Newey St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East in Augusta. Over the years, I realized that in Africa, a breakthrough technology is a sacred object. The African that invents a groundbreaking technology can occupy the position between Albert Einstein and Nelson Mandela and occupy that position in the minds of Africans at home and in the diaspora. That African inventor is invited to sit on the African high table. The invention of the fastest supercomputer is a concrete and visible achievement that everybody understands as pushing the frontier of technology as well as the boundary of human knowledge. None of the 25,000 vector processing supercomputer programmers of the 1980s showed the massively parallel processing supercomputer some love. In the 1970s and 80s, the terra incognita that was, that was the emerging field of massively parallel processing supercomputing was as empty as a ghost town that had only one permanent resident. I, Philip M. Aguale, was that permanent resident of the farthest frontier of supercomputing called Massively Parallel Processing. In the 1980s, I discovered the Massively Parallel Processing supercomputer to be like a book that sat on the library shelf for 108 years and sat without once being checked out. I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel processing supercomputer of the 1980s. I visualized that massively parallel processing supercomputer as a small copy of the internet. The reason my experimental discovery made the news headlines was that for the four decades onward of 1946, the parallel processing machine was a supercomputer hopeful that no supercomputer scientist understood what made it super. The new supercomputer that I invented on the 4th of July, 1989, in turn, gave birth to a new field, to a new field of computer science. A new supercomputer gives birth to a new computer science. The May 8, 1987 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education carried an article that was titled, quote, Some Hail Computational Science as Biggest Advance Since Newton Galileo, unquote. Fast forward three years. The June 27, 1990 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education carried an article that proclaimed that I, Philip Emma Aguale, 
had made the biggest advance in computational science. Back in 1989, one of the science news headlines was that an African supercomputer wizard in the United States had experimentally discovered how and why parallel processing makes modern computers faster and makes the new supercomputer the fastest and invented how and why to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer that encircled the globe in the way the internet does. I am that African supercomputer scientist that was in the news back in 1989. I was in the news for inventing the massively parallel processing supercomputer. I was in the news for inventing that new supercomputer across a new internet that was a new global network of 65,536 tightly coupled processors. I was in the news for experimentally discovering that new supercomputer in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, and for experimentally discovering that new supercomputer at 8.15 in the morning of Tuesday, the 4th of July, 1989, the U.S. Independence Day. I was in the news for theoretically and experimentally discovering that parallel processing is an entirely new way of supercomputing across thousands or millions or billions of commodity of the shelf processors that we are identical and that we are equal distances apart and that encircled a globe in 16-dimensional hyperspace and encircled it in the manner the internet encircled the earth in three-dimensional space. At first, my experimental discovery of the massively parallel processing supercomputer was ridiculed, mocked, and rejected. Everybody in the supercomputer community said I had made an embarrassing mistake. But every supercomputer scientist was embarrassingly mistaken. I was in the news because I invented how to synchronously communicate and how to simultaneously compute and how to communicate and compute together and how to do both as one seamless cohesive unit. That cohesive unit was my new supercomputer de facto. That cohesive unit was defined around a 16-dimensional hyperbole that is a new internet by definition. That cohesive unit was a supercomputing machinery that I used to send and receive emails to and from 65,000 536 or 2 to power 16 16 bit long email addresses. It was not enough that I knew the Philip Emma Aguale internet. I knew that internet back in 1974. I knew that new internet as a new supercomputer. That new internet that was a never-before-seen computer, must know Philip Emagwale as its sole programmer and inventor. I invented a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand 
commodity off the shelf processors. And I invented how to program that new internet to solve the toughest problems arising in extreme scale computational physics, such as the excruciatingly detailed general circulation modeling to foresee otherwise unforeseeable global warming. That new internet was a small copy of a never before understood internet that had only 65,536 processors tightly encircling a globe instead of billions of computers loosely encircling the globe that is planet Earth. I visualized each of my two to power 16 commodity processors as identical and as equal distances apart and as encircling a globe in a 16-dimensional hyperspace. And I visualized my ensemble of processors as evenly distributed across the hypersurface of a hypersphere in a 16-dimensional universe. I visualized my ensemble of processors as outlining a new internet that I visualized in my 16-dimensional universe. My new internet married my 64 binary thousand processors and married them together and married them as one seamless cohesive supercomputer that had one processor at the crossroad of my 16 email pathways. Those 16 pathways we are mutually orthogonal in the 16th dimensional hyperspace. That is, they were perpendicular in the 16 directions of an imaginary 16 dimensional universe. I invented how to speed up computations across that new internet and how to speed it up from 180 years or 65,536 days within only one processor to just one day across that new internet. That's a new global network of 65,536 processors. I invented my new massively parallel processing supercomputer and I invented it by visualizing my email messages as firing like bullets out of my eyes and as emails coming from computers within a new internet in a 16-dimensional hyperspace. I'm Philip Emagwale. I'm the subject of school reports because I invented a new supercomputer that was the precursor to the modern supercomputer. I invented a new supercomputer that is a small copy of a new internet. The new internet that I invented is defined and outlined by an ensemble of 65,536 commodity of the shelf processors that are identical and that are equal distances apart. That new internet is complex, abstract, and a mystery. The 65,536 processors of my new internet we are married together by 1,048,576 bidirectional email wires and married together as a new supercomputer that computed cohesively and did so 
as one new integrated supercomputer and communicated seamlessly as one new internet. I began supercomputing at age 19 on June 20, 1974 in Corvallis, Oregon, United States. I was the lone wolf and the only full-time programmer of the fastest supercomputer of the 1980s. Today, the fastest supercomputer cost the budget of a small nation. The fastest supercomputer is programmed by thousands of supercomputer scientists. The fastest supercomputer occupies the space of a soccer field. The holy grail of the fastest possible supercomputer is to marry together all the processors in the world and marry them to all the computers in the world and marry them to all the supercomputers in the world and marry processors and computers and supercomputers together and as a never before seen internet that will become a never before seen planetary size supercomputer that will turn our science fiction to our descendants non-fiction. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. I discovered the supercomputer paradigm in which the boundary between the computer and the internet is blood. That invention of the parallel processing supercomputer made the news headlines because it had a richness of consequences across science and society. When I began supercomputing on June 20, 1974, I envisioned a planet-sized global network of computers that was the precursor to the internet of today. In subsequent years, I invented a new internet that I called a hyperball that was described in the book titled History of the Internet. I, Philip Emma Aguale, experimentally discovered that my ensemble of processors defined and outlined a new internet that I visualized as my small copy or blueprint or prototype of the internet. Prior to my invention of the massively parallel processing supercomputer that I invented on the 4th of July 1989, each processor within my ensemble of 64 binary thousand processors was like a dim light in a sea of darkness. Insightful and brilliant lecture.